Okay, welcome to the speaking podcast. I'm Roy Collin, and today my guest, uh, we've connected on LinkedIn, and uh, we know each other well, and his name is Deepak, and I'll let Deepak to introduce himself. Roy, how you doing, dude? Uh, happy okay. New Year for anyone who's listening, depending upon when this goes out. If, if it's months later, then scrap that. Um, I'll put it up in December. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, no, dude, so I am... Um, I run um, an SEO agency, so by day, uh, I sound like Batman now, don't I? By day, um, I uh, help, uh, we as a company help businesses um, rank for competitive search terms on Google. Um, and, um, you know, the, the, the reason I was excited to get out or, or get on to talk to you is because, of course, by nature, SEO, um, a lot of people find very boring. So um, I needed to find a way vis-a-vis -vis speaking when I went and talked to people about it to make it sound a lot more interesting than people perhaps give it credit for. So that's what um, I was uh, excited to talk to you about. But yes, Deepak Shukla, founder of Pearl Lemon, SEO agency owner. Hello. And like I've seen your videos and you are very entertaining, you know, like you don't do like a PowerPoint because a lot of people when they're talking about that kind of business, they're just doing PowerPoint. And you're, you're, you're a natural. And what I like as well is I've actually seen, you know, like when a person has a question, you ask them their name. I haven't seen many people do that. And then you repeat their name. So you're making a connection straight away with your group. Uh, you know what? Um, thank you. I'm, I'm really glad you noticed that. Um, Roy. You know, one of the things that I've realized, um, it's the, the, it's the, Dude, I'm untrained. And I've still recently, more recently, got into the kind of formal world of being like, why don't I actually look at something like online about how to speak publicly? And I, oh my God, it makes you realize like how badly that you do things. And, you know, I, 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 you know, I've seen your like amazing bio, the things that you've done. And I look back, for example, at my TEDx speech I did a couple of years ago now. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, that was horrible. I wish I'd like, you know, taken a course or two before I got onto, you know, um, a platform like that and i think that um you know definitely um some of the you know blogs podcasts some of your content that you know i've listened to has has, has just helped me recognize that there's some things we should stay away from you know death by powerpoint the power of just repeating people's names the power of you know slowing down speeding up and it's still all very new to me i feel like i'm learning a new language which is presenting as, and, and, and I'm trying to figure it out as I go, but, but, but definitely, um, you know, it's, it's like that, that kind of learning curve they talk about, you know, going from zero to amateur is, 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 is the fun part because it's easy to go from zero <laughs> to, to kind of amateur. Going from amateur to good and then from good to great is like a whole new can of worms. But uh, I'm still in that kind of nice new space where I'm like, oh, I've just learned a little trick and it, you know, has a big impact. <laughs> Exactly. Well, I, like, I mean, some people, I think tr they try too hard. Like, I can see from the videos that you are really connecting with the audience because you can see they're really focused. Like, sometimes you see a video because you can actually see the audience, you know, in some of the videos. Mm. Like, you could see people in some other uh, speeches, not yours, in their own phones and everything. But you, people have their books out and their notes because the content you're given and you're really active and everything. You know, so. Sometimes I think trying to be the specialist might lose what you've got. Mm. Yeah. You know, like, like at the end of the day, I assume after the meetings that a lot of people come up to you and connect with you and they just want to, you know, get your details and stay in contact because they've seen how much value you've given them. Yeah, I, it's, I, I feel really like, um, you know, blessed to have, have people, you know, approach me sometimes and be like, yo, dude. That was, you know, you, you, that that was, uh, you know, that was really good, um, and uh, and no, it's 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 definitely been nice, and I think that um, I, I I I think I think I just want to try and make a conscious conscious effort with, with 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 speaking to 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 not I don't know to not let the idea or the vehicle of a presentation get in the way of the fact that I'm trying to deliver value, and. Mm -hmm. That, that you need to move people to, or you need to inspire people to actually do things. And, and, and I've always been of the feeling that actually you've got to, you've got to, you've got to stir up emotion in someone before you can try and convince them of anything. And, 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 and that's the place that, you know, I, I, I try and speak from where I can. And, you know, sometimes that's as simple as just showing that, Hey, you know, I'm super enthusiastic about this subject. And, you know, in, 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 in some respects, some of the time it feels like that 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 that's enough 
um, especially in the space of SEO, where you know a lot of people are sat in front of spreadsheets a lot of the time. So that the you know my 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 my, my fellow speakers sometimes make my job easier. <laughs> And what about when you were younger? Like, I know that you, you, you've been in the military, so obviously, you, you know, you get confidence from that. But when you, pr prior to the military, would you have uh, been nervous speaking in school? I am, um, yeah, absolutely. So definitely growing, so growing up specifically, you know, between the ages of 11 to 16, I definitely was someone that was nervous. I got bullied a little bit at school and... You know, that came from me perhaps being the odd one out for a variety of reasons. Um, and what that meant was, um, you know, I, I would ask a lot more questions than I would answer. I would shy away from anything that maybe involved center stage. And I'm thinking now in terms of specifically what that means, I'd have like a group of friends. And I say a group of friends, there was... I, I, my insecurities led me to determining that I wanted to be one of the cool kids. So I'd hang around with this group of, 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 of kids and um, of, of guys. And I would spend most of my time with my, you know, my, my the mouth zipped, not saying anything and really trying as best as I can to flow, fly behind the radar. And I think that, <clears throat> I think I found my voice when I went backpacking, actually. What was really freeing about that experience at 18 was you know the beautiful thing about almost dropping yourself in into a new environment with you know with with no one that you know in a new context is that you can also well you can be who you want but you can also show your best self and you can do it without fear or ramifications or repercussions because you know what if you screw up well, you're moving on to a new place tomorrow anyway, so you can get in, new, get new out. New the next night. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And um, that, that, that was, I think, huge for me. Also, and this was 2004, um, I was 18 then, I went backpacking. Um, and what was great about that, you know, in hindsight, I went by myself, Roy. And that meant I needed to almost, <clears throat> I beg your pardon, practice the art of speaking. Because I had to make friends every damn day. Um, and, and, and that was, you know, in many respects, I think, still to date, the best education I've ever had for speaking far and away. You know, it's just it's moving in from hostel to hostel, being the 18 year old kid, realizing that the 18 year old kid is not going to get anywhere with trying to meet a pretty lady by telling them that you're, you're the 18 year old kid and then quickly determining that I needed to be the 23 year old graduate from Cambridge who wrote for the Lonely Planets merely because of the fact I kept a diary and, and my story becoming, you know, a bit transformative in that way. But, but, but also just kind of moving in and out of different environments and, and, and always kind of being the youngest and recognizing that, you know, I, I, I needed to, you know, make myself worthy of being part of a group and um, but also having the freedom to, to 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 not have any of my history with me or to not be you know the awkward kid in school or to but just to be Deepak oh what's up dude what's your name okay cool and and every day every day it's it's just like it was it was the perfect training ground in many respects I didn't know it at the time but but looking back on it it's kind of how it played out if that makes sense no, totally, totally. Yeah, very good, very good. So let me, like, how, how are you on stage? What way do you prepare? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, is the question, how do I prepare? Yeah, how do you prepare for, like, because I've seen sometimes you'd be talking for like an hour and I don't see you reaching for notes or anything like that. You don't have all, you know, I mentioned earlier, you don't have a projector. You don't have bullet points written down on some of the stuff. So you're just going to, you just, do you have a process? Yeah, absolutely. That's a good question. Um, so I, academia made me despise PowerPoint. I, 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 I feel that, or I, I have a lot of kind of negative connotations or associations towards PowerPoint in general because of the academic kind of background I came out of. And I always thought going in that, wow, whenever I see a PowerPoint load up in a presentation, my heart sinks a little bit and, if, and, and, and I'm like, oh, what kind of presentation is this going to be? Um, so that was the first thing. The second thing was that I'm not detail orientated and little things such as using a clicker at the right time, making sure that a video will load in screen, making sure that 
is there any consistency of branding? Does there need to be consistency of branding? What if I turn up to a presentation, as has happened, and I don't really know who the audience is, and I discover that when I turn up that what I built is not fit for my audience at all. A great example of this was recently, I went to, uh, I spoke at an event called Build and Master, and there were several speakers that were there, and um, we were all kind of lining up, and my, my, my actual presentation title was how to use you know, SEO and SEM to you know, build and increase your business in 2019, right? So, so kind of, you, you could argue, academically driven from a marketing standpoint, right? We're gonna be talking tactics and strategy. I looked at the room, quickly discovered that, well, first of all, the event is called Build and Master, and most of the audience were people that were in full-time employment and were looking to transition into the world of entrepreneurship. And I thought, right, my speech is gonna be completely bloody redundant because mm. you can't really speak to someone about, you know, the, a month nine or, you know, what, why would you speak to someone about mile 18 of the marathon if they've not even entered a marathon before? It's just, <laughs> it's, 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 it's back to front. So, so, so that's happened a couple of times. Um, so I think that, you know, in those situations, um, well, well, no, w w going in with those, those thoughts in mind, um, you know, I, I, I think that there's a couple of things that I do do. One, um, I try and understand quickly who it is I'm talking to and, and what is it that they actually care about. Num, 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 number two, I will, if I can, always try and think in terms of analogies. So what is the analogy that's going to be meaningful to the audience? Number three, I think in term, I try and think in terms of three broad sections. So when I say three broad sections, start, middle and ending, my, my plan, if I'm being really honest at times, would be right, entrepreneurs. So we're going to talk about mindset, we're going to talk about actions and then we're going to be talk about dealing with failure. And that will be what I'll think about in my head. And, and, and I definitely, you know, could do parts of my process better, but there'll, there'll be the three areas. And then I'll probably spend 10 minutes before I go onto the stage thinking, what are the areas within each section that I think would speak to the audience? And I might write them one or two of them down kind of, in the palm of my hand um, and typically and this is ironic because it's taken from my academic days if I'm for example doing mindset action and then failure I would write literally M A F for mindset action failure and then underneath it I draw a line and I put you know two 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 meaning 20 minutes 20 minutes 20 minutes and I would maybe, you know, find a clock in the room or set a stopwatch and kind of just move, move from there, dude. Okay. Oh, that's interesting, yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, uh, I'm, when, I'm, when you've had situations that you knew it wasn't the right audience, were you able to actually change and just completely go off the cuff? And yeah, I, one of the tactics, um, one of the things that I read was, um, you know, uh, ask who your audience is. So the last event, the, the event that, I'm just, that I've just made reference to, I literally open with say, so, you know, I said, this is what I've been asked to speak about. However, there's something else that I could speak about as well. So I want to get a show of hands. First of all, are you, uh, and, and, and I, I kind of, in, in, in that instance, I, I was able, but simply only because the audience were quite receptive. And I, I, I asked them for a show of hands. I asked them what they preferred to hear about. And all of them preferred to hear about the process of building an agency rather than how to do SEO for their own websites. They weren't that interested in SEO for their website, but they were curious about, well, how do you get, how do you get people to pay you to, 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 to kind of build your website? And I think that, you know, I think that there's lots of, the, the, there's topics that all of us kind of, you know, are, are experts in to the degree that I think that a lot of people get insecure by this idea that, well, Deepak, you know, I can't speak of, you know, entrepreneurship because it's not something I've spoken about before, but I'll say, well, if you're a business owner, you're probably giving impromptu advice all the time anyway, and you're not trying to compare yourself to Robert Kiyosaki or Tim Ferriss or, you know, Seth Godin or, you, 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 you know, you are, if you're on the stage, recognize you're an expert in front of the eyes of the audience. And number two, you know, you 
I think it's taken from that book, Catch Me If You Can, um, that the film was then popularized by Leonardo DiCaprio. And in that movie, what's really interesting is that he goes in and he runs a whole semester as a sociology professor. And, and he's never taken a class in sociology in his life before. And the, the, the guy, you know, when they chase him, they're like, you know, how, how were you able to teach degree level sociology to people? And he just says, I was just always one chapter ahead. And there's something to be said for that because, you know, it's, it's again, it's not about your own insecurities. It's about the impact that you're able and, and the value that you're able to provide to your actual audience. And if you're, you know, five meters down the road from them, people will be like, oh, I've done barely anything. I'll, but, and, and, and I would say to that, but you're still five meters further down the road than, than they are. And that means there is value that you could give because, you know, if they're making 500 quid a month and you're making 1500 pounds a month, you're still making three times as much as they're making. So there's, of course, there's value that you can offer. And um, that has been very useful for me when I've had to, in some moments, think on my feet and I think, okay, Deepak, recognize that you are further down the road, meaning that you do have value that you can give back. And, and, and that's been very helpful to me in some of those moments where I thought, Jesus Christ, what, what, you know, how am I going to kind of navigate this road? Hmm. Oh, very good, very good. Like I had a, a workshop, I was doing a workshop in Wood for entrepreneurs and like I had some stuff uh, basically on my computer and what I did, I asked them, what were they doing? And then how could I help them? Because when I knew their kind of business, yeah. I was in this, it, and it was like two hours. It was the very first workshop I did. But by asking the question, then I think I gave more value by the stuff I was doing. And then I made them all do a pitch. So I said, do your pitch. And just based on their pitch, I was able to give them some feedback as well. And, you know, they oh, brilliant. value from it. Like, Oh, brilliant. No, exactly, Roy. I think that that's, that's exactly, um, you know, been my experience of it, that, you know, think on your feet. If you don't know your audience, ask your audience. <laughs> um, you know, we had, a, uh, we had a chap that also spoke at that event. And his, um, what was really funny was that we were talking about, before we both went on, we were talking about, you know, needing to adjust to an audience and, and you know, how, you know, pitches, there, there's the idea that you have in the world of what you're going to deliver, then there's the real world and who turns up and you're thinking this is just not going to make sense. And his title was, you know, um, something about culture in the workplace. And, um, and, and, and that was really interesting to see because he decided not to adapt his speech and he was, you know, um, at a, you know, corporate firm like, you know, Google or Facebook, something to this effect. And he was like a VP of marketing and he was talking about how to, you know, uh, build a formidable culture in the workplace or, you know, something to that effect. And the presentation was great, but the choice of subject was, 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 was not the right thing for an audience who are just interested in becoming. And it's really interesting, as you said, that then you look at the audience and you see people kind of, you know, they're on their phones or, you kind of start losing people, and um, it's, um, it's 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 always um, interesting when something like that happens. When you know you decide to stick with stick to your guns, and you think, but this this audience, I'm not going to appreciate your guns. No, exactly, exactly. And like, there's another thing that I, I learned as well is a lot of people they record their speech, but they never record the audience. And if you can, especially if you're speaking in front of a large audience, you can have another camera that's just seeing the reaction. So you can then do real checking afterwards to see, ooh, this is kind of putting them to sleep or this is actually getting people interested. You know? Yeah. Very, I, you rarely see people. That's, that's a really good point. To be honest with you, Roy, you've just given me an aha moment because I don't do that. Or certainly if I've done that, it's been just like, it's not been purposeful and intentional. So moving forward, when I, when I speak, I'm going to make sure that there's, a, there's two cameras in the room so we can get a, get, get a kind of, eye on the audience the whole time be like well Deepak you thought that was great but actually your audience were sent to sleep I was like brilliant good to know <laughs> the other thing is and it's like it's happened to me I've seen in some of your videos is you know sometimes you're giving your phone to somebody like it's better if you have the tripod and have the camera because one they're moving and two a person like you hear them yawning or if they're sneezing or whatever I had a case where I had a good speech and I couldn't upload it because they were, he was having a, a little chit chat with the person next to him. And all you could hear was, was the conversation. Oh. 
you know so uh, like yeah. i think the best thing is to have a tripod with a decent and if you can do it have both that you're actually recording on both sides oh i did yeah I've, I've been told off a couple of times now because i've had crap organization like deepak what are you doing so so Roy, thank you for the reminder, dude. It's just, uh, it's just you made my heart sick. I'm like, oh my god, yeah, you're right. My like my my build and master speech was terrible. The video, the audio is out of sync, and it but it was in, yeah. Anyway, it's my the fact. The fact that I actually watched uh, a few of the videos that were an hour long shows that the content was excellent because I will switch off very fast. I mean, sometimes you've extremely professional videos. Per- but the content is no good and I'll switch off. So your content was excellent. So like, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Thank you, dude. Um, I'll, I'll keep working though on the, on the, on the production. <laughs> and like, are you actually getting paid for speaking when you're doing yeah. the? No, um, I'm not. And, um, I, I mean, I've done one speech where I was paid, but certainly, you know, if, 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 well, you know, if, if you can help me with that, then, then, then amazing. But um, I would, I, I definitely would like to get paid to speak from the stage. I, um, the reality is that I haven't quite figured out steps for how I could do that. There are, you know, various, for example, coaching programs that talk about, you know, I will show you how to get paid to speak from the stage. Um, but um, it's, 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 it's weird. It's something that I would like to do, but I guess it's not, kind of mission one if that makes sense like I do enjoy yeah yeah like I do enjoy speaking and you know it's part of the reason that also I just you know was like oh Roy I'd love to come and talk to you about you know the the, the process of speaking um because yeah um so so no I don't but yes if there's any of your audience that are like I could get you on the stage speaking then hire me baby But I, I think for yourself, I mean, you're going to, especially with the content you get, I, I assume you get some clients from the stage, from yeah. basically the content that you're delivering. Because a lot of people, you know, there's a bit of work and you're talking about the outsourcing and everything. But some people just don't want to do that. And they're happy to say, Look, if you're able to get these results, do it for me. So by being on stage, they can see that you're the real McCoy. And, you know, that way yeah. you're actually learning you know, yeah. indirectly. Yeah. No, absolutely. That, 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 that's definitely been the case that um, there's been some clients that have come from it. And I, um, I still, it was like a tea moment. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For those, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Dude, no, you're completely right. I mean, speaking, I think the, the most powerful thing that I find about speaking, you know, now that I think about it is what's been amazing about that is it helps me convert clients massively because you know, talking to a client first time about the journey that we're going to go on together or what my hopes are for them or speaking to their concerns. <clears throat> speaking and public speaking is like the, per- the perfect training ground for that. So, you know, it, it, it's been a massive help for the sales cause that I do. You know, when you're able to say, well, well listen, you know, right, we're, let's, let's be honest, we're, we're, this, is, this is a marathon to, that you're running, right? And, and I'm almost like one of your nourishment stands along the way. And, you know, I know that we're going to be here mile one because that's where we're starting. But, you know, my intention is to still be there mile 18. And and the way that that, and, and, you know, speaking to people like this in terms of analogies and on the calls that I have. So, you know, public speaking and, and, and understanding the power, which is something I'm still working on. I still, you know, understand the power of storytelling and how to move people emotionally. And, and, and also, of course, give that level of, practicality and and kind of trying to find find that mix is is something that you know has literally um transferred across into you know my 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 life of business as well as my life personally you know whether it's you know persuading someone to go to the cinema or convincing friends of doing this or suggesting that we go there or you know having um equally in business having a client who's unhappy with a result that's coming in and talking about you know finding a way to help them keep faith or, you know, it's particularly in those moments where there's problems that come up and and, and that's where you need to speak to someone's insecurities and fears and stuff. And I think that, you know, that's what, that's what public speaking is ultimately. It's speaking to someone's insecurities and fears and offering them hope of, of, of a better future as a consequence of your advice. And that's, that's also something I think that sometimes gets lost. And, you know, that's what we, on any public platform should be doing. What are you doing? I'm offering inspiration and I'm providing, you know, a route to success. Yes, yes. No, no, perfect, perfect. 
and <clears throat> like I actually yeah yeah you gave because uh, with the different uh, speeches that I'd uh, watched there was one thing where you gave a tinder example do you remember uh -huh. that yeah, so if you could actually repeat that, it'd be nice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think that um, like first impressions are everything and people need to, you know, life in, in, in some respects, as, as with public speaking, is, is a lot like dating on Tinder. I mean, you, you swipe left, you swipe right, right? And there's so many micro decisions that we make, whether even it's on Tinder or whether, you know, a man approaches woman, woman approaches man in a bar, you, 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 you make some kind of, you know, immediate decisions as to, you know, okay, look, you okay, know, the, the kind of look, feel, taste, touch in, in, you know, how does this person look? Okay, right. He looks like he's a speaker. Right. Brilliant. How does he initially, when he walks onto the stage, make me feel? Is he walking and kind of, you know, head down, back slightly arched? How or what, what is it now that he says? What is he saying? Does it make sense? Is he stuttering when he says it? And, and these, these, these kind of, you know, parallels serve data. It's dating. I mean, it's dating 101. It's like, you know, you, 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 you go to approach, you know, the, you know you, you're a man and you see a pretty woman at a bar and you approach her, well, please, Lord, you know, make sure that you've washed, showered and shaved. Make sure that you don't, you know, smell. Make sure that you approach something with confidence and self-belief. And this is actually the thing that I think sits at the heart of everything that we do in our lives. Be confident yeah. and believe in yourself. And if you don't believe in yourself, act like you do because then the results over time correspondingly do follow it's okay to not believe in yourself as long as outwardly you act in opposition to that i think because yeah. it's you know it's like i'm worried i'm scared still do it and 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 i think that you know certainly again when i was 18 years old and i went away and i backpacked and i was like oh there's you know there's a pretty girl here you know pretty girl here or pretty a lot of the things that happened at that stage when I was meeting strangers and I was introducing myself or there'd be like, you know, I don't know, Carly, 23 from Canada. And I was like, oh, wow, she's like really pretty. You know, how, how am I going to make an impression? What is it that I'm going to say? Um, you know, these, you know, part of this are the reasons why, you know, my partner and I are together today. And, and, and you, know, um, you know, we've been together six years right now. And, um, you know, she, she's, she's Italian born and raised. And she's like, oh, I've never even put Indian people on my radar until, you know, we, you and I met. And, and where does that come from? It comes from when I was 18 and when I went away and traveled. And what's underneath that? Practice, perseverance. And practice and perseverance often do build self-belief because if you practice and then you persevere with your failures, you begin to start seeing results, I think. And, 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 and you know, building, building that really. And in the beginning, of course, it's hard just as public speaking is hard and, and you always reach new levels. You learn over time that, wow, I used to think I was good then, but if I knew then what I know now, how much better would I be? And that, that's a brilliant thing because it means that you progressed. It means that you're, you know, and, and I think that um, speaking is so powerful because it, it, people don't really, well, or maybe they do. It sits at the heart of everything that we do. It's, 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 it's you know, be a good speaker. You'll be a great conversationalist. Be a good speaker you will go into boardrooms and be able to close people. Be a good speaker. You know, in my case, I, I, I met the woman that, you know, I'm, I'm, I've now been with for six years and, you know, we're building our life together. And, you know, it came from a lot of these moments where, you know, you can, you can inspire people into a vision of what might be possible for themselves or with you as a consequence of, you know, your public speaking. Yeah, yeah. Now the compound effect of the small. Uh, yeah. it, it was it the cat that was, I thought it was a dog because I yeah. could hear it. I thought a yeah. dog was right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's Jenny, my my, my cat. She's uh, oh, she's, she's 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 here. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, you were saying, Roy, about the compound effect. Yeah, just all these little times that you got, say, rejection and just practicing and everything. And the other thing, and it, it was mentioned on one of your speeches, is you were saying based on like the search engine optimization, but I think you can apply it to public speaking as well, that if you do make a mistake, you might go on stage, you might go to, diff you know, do a little tour to different people. Maybe you're in multi-level marketing and you're trying to do a pitch to people and you make a hames of it. 
so what? There's more people out there. Don't be taking it home with you. Don't be letting it eat you up. Just move on. And, you know, and even if you do make a mistake, ask the people there. I know I made a mistake. How could I be better? And they'll actually, you know, they'll appreciate you for doing that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's such a, it's such a powerful thing, I think. And, and that's, that's where you make your most learning strong. It's uncomfortable, but it's, it's where you screwed up that gives you your opportunity to become great. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, well, the other thing actually I'd mentioned because I saw one of the speeches you had spoke at the the Chelsea football club. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so that was that. You know, that was what was really interesting was I met Juan, who is I think he's South American. I don't is he a Spaniard? But he, anyway, he's Spanish speaking, um, and I was sitting in the Jaffa Bakehouse, which is literally a cafe, a Persian cafe, which is literally um, about 100 meters from where I live in, in, in Fulham. So I was sitting and he was sitting on the table across and we both had our laptops out at like one or 2 p.m. and just kind of gave a nod hello. And then we got speaking and he was like, oh, so, so what, do you, what do you do? Are you a student? And I was like, oh no, actually kind of, I, 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 I work. And then we got into the conversation about, well, what is it that you do? How do you do it? All, all of this kind of, and as it turned out, he was um, head of like education or at the media center at Chelsea Football Club. And he was like, you need to come in and talk to some of the people that are part of our pro, some of the local community that are part of our program here at Chelsea Football Club, because um, it was all, it was really all about entrepreneurship and, um, uh, that 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 was how the you know I was really blessed to have the actual speech and the relationship come about and um, then um, you know I I I I I went in and um, it was it was um, you know I think that um, I I think I've been really lucky to have been given the gift of not having you know had the best circumstances with some of the things that have happened to me. Um, circumstances that I brought upon myself, you know, my partner, which I made reference to, you know, Daniela, you know, several years ago, we were living in, 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 in North Holt and we were on kind of job seekers allowance. And I had promised her really this, this vision of how things could be if she moved from her little village in Italy to, to be in London with me. And the reality was so far in opposition to that, that, it was causing you know us to break down i mean we were not in a good way yeah we we were struggling you know money or all of the things that came associated with that and you know um it's 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 been a real real journey to kind of get to the other side of that where you know i'm a, you know i'm fortunate to be financially stable now and to to have the time to of course connect with you and to talk about really important things like this and you know that was um part of you know the, the the journey I think that I shared at Chelsea Football Club and I think that um you know one of the things that I'm reminded of now that you've asked me about that is like Grant Cardone talks a lot about this in 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 the 10x rule that for me one of the things that inspires me to speak and to kind of you know still seek out speaking opportunities you know all have been pretty much unpaid right now i would love to get paid but you know well, why do you still do it deep out why do you you know all of that um it i i, I think i, I just love it, it it's about being able to give back i think mm. and be able to share you know or to, to to hope that your your story can inspire others around you to you know build greatness into their own lives and that it can move them to to to, to action and you know if i think people walk away from any of the presentations or the speeches that I give on any stage, anywhere, whether it's one person, as has happened at some of the speeches I've given, or whether it's an audience, then, 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 then amazing. And I think that means, you know, people like yourself and, and, and I, Roy, it means that, you know, that's, that, that's where the, the, the magic is. And that's why, you know, it keeps, it still keeps coming back to me. And, you know, I still desire, to, to go out and speak, even if I'm an SEO agency owner and, you know, on the surface of it, there's really, you know, it's really so far and away from what I do as a course of business. Mm. I, I believe that as well. Like that you give out, you know, you know, for the better of mankind, 
it comes back to you. Now you end up just things go good for you. Yeah. Like yeah. Life as well. Exactly. Exactly, dude. No, I completely agree. I completely agree. No, perfect. Listen, it's been fantastic speaking with you. How can our audience uh, contact you? Well, like you're on LinkedIn and everything, so I can share that on the when I'm launching the podcast and. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so, yeah. LinkedIn, um, of course, there's a bunch of stuff of my speeches on, on YouTube if, if people want to go and have a look. And, and but they're the two places. So LinkedIn and, and YouTube, and they'll find like a lot of my content. I'll, I'll share with you the link of my speaking events um, so that you, you know, your audience, if they're interested, can, can, can see what, it, what else it is I have to say um, outside of this. Well, I know that like because i'm big into marketing and i like you know i i like i read a lot of books and everything and just from listening to what you say like when you're doing something how you investigate and how you do i think just by watching your videos they will learn a lot so you know i would highly recommend that you actually go and uh, watch the videos because you will learn something from it thank you Roy. thank you so much dude <laughs> well, no problem. okay so that's um that's uh, that's what we've got time for today. So join us next week and uh, we'll have another guest. Thank you very much.